Good morning. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Alan Holt. And it's wonderful to have you here with us, as always. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create, Create a, a clean, clean heart, heart in me, me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. <clears throat> a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord, and where I am there also will my servant be. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servants be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've always felt this was a very interesting Sunday. It's the fifth Sunday of Lent. It's the Sunday before Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. And, uh, you know, we've all seen a lot of movies. And if you ever watch, you know, a karate movie or a shoot 'em up, there's always this climactic fight, a great battle at the end of the movie. And right before that, the stars and sometimes the villains will say a few things and it just sets the stage for what's going to come, the thrilling climax. And the way John the Evangelist wrote this gospel, uh, it follows that same pattern. See, today what we have is Jesus saying those last words before all the events around the crucifixion take place. And um, so he's talking about how he's feeling. It's talking about what his purpose is. He's speaking about what is to come. And I find it very interesting. For instance, he says, I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Now he is, he's troubled. What does that mean? It means he's scared. It means he's uncomfortable. He knows what is coming down the road towards him and it, it troubles his soul. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. He knew why he had come, and that's what he was getting ready for. He says earlier, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Jesus saw himself as being that grain of wheat. He knew that if he died on the cross, it was going to have this great and beneficial effect. He would save us from our sins. And so he was willing. And when we think about that, and when we think about that again next Sunday, and we think about it again on Good Friday, we need to make sure that we understand this. In John's Gospel especially, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the Son of God. He's pictured as being in charge. And yes, these bad things happen, but Jesus gets to choose. 
moment to moment to moment, again and again and again, he gets to decide whether he's going to die on the cross or not. And his decision is an unequivocal yes. I'm dying on the cross. I'm saving these people I love from their sins. And he didn't look forward to that with great enthusiasm, of course. His heart was troubled, but he was willing. And why? Because he loved us. And that really gets to the nature of love, the nature of generosity. Uh, he had this willingness to put our benefit, our welfare, ahead of what he would normally and naturally want. And that's what love does. And when we think about that, we need to think about the, the, great God, the great love that God does have for us. Everything that God has ever done has been for us. And, but we also need to think about us and our response. We need to think about can we love that same way? Can we be as self-sacrificing? Can we be as generous? Can we try? And ultimately, that's what we have to aim for. Because as Christians, we are supposed to be followers of Jesus Christ. And so we should look at him and say, hey, he was worried. He was filled with some trepidation. He was a bit scared, but he did it anyway. Why? Because the love he had for us, that willingness to put us first, gave him courage. Can I be the same way? That's the question each of us needs to ask ourselves and answer from day to day to day over the rest of our lives. Several years ago, I was working a men's retreat, and before the retreat, we had several meetings you know, with the retreat team, and at these meetings, there were some talks, and I remember one day, somebody gave a talk to us about being generous, being self-sacrificing, and at the end of the talk, he asked, so, raise your hand, which of you would give your life for your faith? And around the room, hand after hand went up. People kept saying, yes, I'd give my life for my faith. And then the talk ended, and everybody was feeling good and feeling strong and feeling dedicated. And then I had to say a few words to bring everyone down. And I said, okay, now, don't raise your hands, but think about this. Last time you went on vacation and maybe took your kids to the beach if when Sunday rolled around, did you take time out from your vacation to go to church? And head after head went down. And it was clear that most of the people in the room skipped mass the last time they went on vacation. And so then I had to ask the tough question. If you can't even give up part of your Sunday when you're on vacation, how can you say that you'll give your life if that's what's needed? And that was the big, difficult question we all had to confront ourselves with. And it's not just going to church on Sunday. It's all those moments of self-sacrifice that come to us moment after moment, day after day. You know, those moments in which you can look at the dishes in the sink and walk on by and leave them for somebody else. Or you can say, well... I guess here's a good deed for me to do. Or those moments in which there's the kid in school that nobody likes and you can either say hello and be friendly or you can say, well, I may be ostracized if I do. There are moments like that that we all have, moments in which we can be self-sacrificing, moments in which we can be patient, moments in which we can put our dignity or our safety or the respect of others on the line and do what Christ would do or not. Those are the choices that we have to make, and those are the choices that add up to a self-sacrificing life. Chances are none of us will ever have to give our lives for our faith, but hopefully if the day ever comes, we'll be ready to do so. And how do we become that way? First of all, we tell stories like this, the story of Jesus Christ, and we remind ourselves that's who we follow and that's what we're supposed to be. Secondly, we have that good prayer life, that relationship with God, so that he does give us the strength and the guidance we need when the day comes. But then thirdly, we have to make sure we practice for it. We have to make sure that when those moments come up, moment after moment, day after day, that we try to be generous, we try to be self-sacrificing, we try to be as loving as Jesus was and put the needs of others before our own. And if we do that, well then when we do come to the true test of life, when we come to that moment which we can be wonderfully virtuous or not, well, we will make the right choice because we'll be ready. And ultimately, when we think about Jesus in today's gospel, 
he was preparing himself. So what we need to do is make sure that we prepare ourselves day after day for the rest of our lives when those moments come, those moments in which we can be heroically Christian, when we can be heroically generous, heroically kind, heroically forgiving, heroic in some way that would make God proud. And those are the days we have to prepare for. Those are the days we have to work for in the small moments, the small decisions of each day. And with God's grace, with his help, who knows, maybe we can lead the Christian life to the fullest in those moments that really matter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we offer our prayers to our God, who calls us to be his holy people. That Christ may form his deacons, priests, and bishops evermore in his image and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord may teach all nations and people, from the least to the greatest, to know his love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose hearts are experiencing despair may be consoled by God and given his comfort and his peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Holy Spirit may cleanse our hearts and give us steadfast spirits for the final weeks of our Lenten journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that all who have died may soon experience eternal life in the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of heaven and earth, in your loving kindness, hear and answer our prayers. We ask these in all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spirit and try heart, may accept by you, O Lord, may our sacrifice and recite this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we offer the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Dr. Alan Holt, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we can have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what, at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, as always, for being with us. Today is an anniversary of sorts. Uh, last year, our first Mass that we videotaped and then broadcast was done on Palm Sunday, which will be next Sunday. So this means we've been doing this for a liturgical year. Not quite 12 months yet, but we're getting close. So anyway, it's been a really wonderful experience. I assume... I'm assuming we're going to continue to do this at least through the end of December. Uh, we'll just have to see what's allowed, what the bishop encourages, all those sort of things. But I think even after we all return to church, there are still going to be some folks who can't because of health or other issues. And... Um, and be good to continue this ministry for them. So, thank you for all the support you've given, both the financial support, which has been wonderful and needed, but also the um, 
enth level of enthusiasm. Every week I get a letter or an email or two about how happy people are to have these masses on video, and it, it really does, you know, make me feel good. So um, thank you for that. Uh, next week, as I mentioned, is Palm Sunday. Uh, even if you can't be here for a Mass, if you would like a blessed palm branch, maybe after church we'll put some outside uh, on the sidewalk, or near, uh, on a table on the sidewalk, uh, for people to drive by and pick them up. So if you want to come by on Sunday and pick up a palm branch or two, uh, that would be just great. So thank you and have a good week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.